another episode of Inside the Line Real Stories by Real Cops. I'm Dave across from Dale. And Nathan is here to my right. And today's episode is called, Is That Really Against the Law? And Dale, you're going to basically ask us questions about laws that may or may not be on the books. Is that the way we're going to go with it? Yeah, something to that effect. You know, we're just going to kind of get some conversation on if they are laws, do you think cops really enforce them? And I think just when you think the country's starting to get civilized and humans are starting to become more civilized, there are these laws out there that have been on the books for hundreds of years. And a lot of times people don't want to take them off. They don't want to take them off. Well, because it takes a lot of effort for the legislature and the senators and the congressmen to vote for them and rewrite the statutes and all that other stuff. Here's my question. Just leave I'm, them on the books. And if they want to arrest you for it, they will. Am I still allowed to lay with a, with a, with a lamb? As long as it's consensual. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So I don't know. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't, uh, I never would do that. You know why, Dale? Why is that? I think it's bad. Oh boy. <laughs> Nathan, this Nothing is going to be a tough Nothing one. I'm glad, I'm glad you came aboard today, Nathan. Dave, Dave, Dave seems to be off. His meds are probably off. He's a little off. You know, we talked and I looked at your notes and I'm thinking, you've got a fascination with this first topic. Well, I, I do because it's a very common act that consenting adults do, and should they be able to do it? Nathan, quick question. Yeah. Do you know the definition of sodomy? Just a, layman's terms. A good time. A good time. Well, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. True or false? Yeah. In some states in the good old U.S. of A., sodomy is still against the law. Yes or no? In an ideal world, I'd say, no, it's not against the law. This is not an ideal world. So I'd say some people still think it's bad. Everybody knows that it's still on the books in, in several in several states. Am I right? Yes, it is. And although the Supreme Court, right around 2003, stated that you can't necessarily constrict a person's right to have sexual relations with another person, consensual, animals out of the equation, sorry to say, Dave. So they've said that. But however, there is a few states, Alabama, Florida, Idaho, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, to name a few, in which that it's still illegal to have sodomy or to sodomize your mate, Dave. Now, Nathan, I asked you a quick question. Yeah. That little porn film that you were going to do, mm -hmm. Little Anal Annie, yeah. you were going to do it in Mississippi. Uh -huh. Where are you going to do it now? Where are you going to film that? Ooh. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm thinking Washington State because that place is full of butt fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Washington State's fine, Nathan. All I know is who's going to break the bad news to all the convicts in jail? They're already convicted. They're already, They're already convicted, convicted, right? I don't think they're looking at their chat and going, all right, now I want to make sure I get the right state for my prison. What about the LBTQ RST community? They got to find some more things to occupy their time on a Sunday afternoon, and that ain't one of them if they live down south. Are those the right initials? I don't know. LB, what is it? L G B T Q R or something like that? What is it, Nathan? Uh, it's definitely more letters than you know how to pronounce. All right, thank you. Probably right. They probably left it on the books because of a because yeah, all the congressmen with it. What are the who are the people that work for the congressmen? What do they call the pages? Aids. Yeah, aides and pages. Yeah. Pages and aides. Yeah. yeah, the congressmen have to have, have keep it open. A lot of those guys. Yes. Well, this is the male, the male congressman. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just think that it's one of these cases where they did leave it on. Maybe it's maybe it's attack on charge. Maybe it's just yeah. sort of just to. What do I suggest here, Dave, at this point? What's that? I say we put this one to rest, put it to bed, Dave. We've made our point that it's legal if you're a consenting adult in most parts of the country. And that's it. Now you're, you're done with it. I'm done with we've it, Dave. That's it. enough. We've belabored it. All right. <laughs> let's go to the next one, because I know this is, again, one of your favorite things. One of your favorite things to enforce. My favorite pastime. F favorite pastime. To right, hold on here. Is it legal or illegal in some parts of the country to sell lemonade without a permit? If it's illegal in Massachusetts, my child should have been locked up when she was five oh, years old. She needs it, brother. She needs it. It's <laughs> legal in Massachusetts, but there was a case in Coralville, Iowa. I'm actually heading out to Iowa at the end of the week. Coralville, Iowa, there was a case, and it was on YouTube. It was all over the news. Some cops from that town went up to a... Bunch of kids, seven, eight, nine-year-old kids in a little community. 
They were selling lemonade and they shut them down because they didn't have a <laughs> they permit. They didn't have a permit They're to sell lemonade. They're making about 10 bucks and the permit costs. How much do you think the permit costs to sell lemonade, Nathan, for a year? Uh, $47. Uh, how about $400? $400. To sell lemonade, yeah. In that, at least in Iowa. Okay. That's, they're, out, they're out of their minds in Iowa. That's crazy. I think you should talk to somebody <laughs> when you're there. About well, I'm that. heading to Iowa and I'm going to talk to a few I can, people. I can tell you this I know lemonade stand economics. From my own experience, when she did, my daughter and the two boys next door, they did it when they were little. They spilled probably, we we bought the lemonade from the store. They spilled <laughs> about three quarters of it. They sold the rest of it. They always gave back the wrong change. You'll give, you give, oh, yeah. you give 50 cents for a 50 cent thing. They give you back a, a dollar 50 change. Yeah. And um, it was funny to watch. But it was costly. Oh, it absolutely! Cost, it cost me. My about kids used to bucks. sell lemonade. Yeah, I was just hoping. We live right in the main street. I was just hoping that like a dime would roll into the street, and my son would have, <laughs> would have went after that dime, and that would have been the end of the lemonade stand. That's hysterical. So you can't sell lemonade from a wheelchair, can you? So what? Yeah, of course you can. You could probably do better. <laughs> How do you figure that that's going to be against the law? Oh, I, I could place? never imagine being a cop being sent to that. I was sent. Early on in my career, to it was Saturday, Saturday morning, and there was a neighborhood complaint that there was a yard sale. The neighbors were complaining that the people who had the yard sale, there was a lot of cars, they were walking through other people's yards, and they called the mayor's office, or they called someone from the mayor's office, and they said, no, that, that location doesn't have a permit to have a yard sale. So they sent me down there, Officer Friendly, Mm -hmm. Didn't give a fuck 10 years ago, Dave. <laughs> so you know the response they got. I didn't shut them down. Right. I'm not going to shut down a yard sale just well, because the neighbors complain. Here are a couple things. First of all, yard sales happen on Saturdays. Yes. So how do you get somebody at City Hall on a Saturday? Well, they knew someone at City Hall. And they certain people at City Hall will know. People know things to bust other people's balls, believe it or not. Right. They okay. do. I mean, this is the thing. If people are walking across your property, your neighbors have a yard sale. It's a small sale. neighborhood. Nothing major. But what is it? Neighbors who didn't like each other or what? Yeah, that's usually how it works. That's why we have a cookout, Dave, or a big party in the neighborhood. Invite everyone, especially the people you don't like, because it's the people you don't like who are going to call the cops on you, try to get you broken up. And that's exactly what happened. So I just kind of told these people to let it go, forget about it, have a nice day. I'll arrest you for disturbing the peace. I'm not arresting anyone <laughs> for a yard sale without a permit. I make my own laws. Absolutely. Well, I got to say, yard sale without a permit, probably, that's amazing. But uh, but yeah, the lemonade stand, that's still- that, That's that, out of control. That's madness. That's out of control. And you see it very common with food trucks. Food trucks are very popular. Yeah. And they, they have to regulate those because those are the Board of Health- so you definitely would have to deal with those because you wouldn't want a food truck rolling up in your town and they're selling tacos in there or something like that. And, and they're very poor hygiene and people get sick. So you'd, about, have, you'd have to regulate that. How about ice cream? Ice cream? ice cream trucks? Oh, the ice cream truck. Yeah. Other than being possibly filled with pedophiles in the ice cream truck, Dave, <laughs> I think they're fine. Pedophiles <laughs> always make the best ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> how do. would you it's know that? I know some guys from when I was a kid. <laughs> what do you think? They, they were very rough with me, but the ice cream was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next one? Nathan, what do you think? You're driving down the highway, mm -hmm. 2 o'clock at night. It says 55, and you're like, yeah. ah, I don't like 55. A little too fast for me. You're going to go 30. Okay. Think a cop can pull you over for going 30 in a 55? Yeah, probably, yeah. Technically, in some jurisdictions, it's a violation. Not, it's not a criminal violation, but it's a code violation, especially on the highway, because it can be a dangerous situation. If everyone's going 50, 60, 70, yeah. and that's the speed limit, and you're putting along at 30, you could cause a, a crash, a rear-end collision up the road. I'm from Massachusetts. When I drive in the passing lane and the guy in front of me is only going five miles over the speed limit, I go out of my mind. Do you? I go out of my mind. No, not always. Not always, but sometimes. But am I correct to say that if you've got somebody who's driving too slowly, there's usually two reasons for it. Elderly. Yes. Stoned. Possibly intoxicated or impaired. And that's why they're driving. That's a signal or a factor 
in like drunk driving or impaired driving. So you see somebody driving too slowly. Too slow. That gives you the the. the well, the I wouldn't know. Not that in and of it. Not necessarily that in and of itself. Other than maybe being on the highway, but someone driving really, really slow at midnight, like ten miles an hour down the street, when the speed limit's thirty five. Why are they driving so slow? Because they're kind of in another world because they're so buzzed out, they don't even know how fast they're going. Right. So you could pull them over on that and maybe another factor that they went over the yellow line. Whatever you want to make up, Dave, you know? Right. (laughs) (laughs) I know. No, I'm just kidding. Right by the book, baby. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It's a possible sign of impairment. Yeah. But there there was a case out in California where they pulled someone over and because he was going too slow and they found some drugs in the car and it ended up with an arrest, uh, a large quantity of drugs in in the lawyer. For the yep. person who was pulled over and said, hey, you can't pull someone over because they're going 40 at a 65 mile an hour speed zone on the highway. And a lot of the stuff got thrown out. But they they, they did kind of leave it to the cop's judgment that, yeah, you, you can, depending on the circumstances, pull a car over that is going slower than the speed limit on a certain location or a certain roadway, right. i.e. a highway. All right. All right. Moving on here, David. This is to you. I'll tell you another thing. What do you think, like? Dave? If you if you have a sexually transmitted disease and you're if? just about to get married. <laughs> yeah. Just, let me tell you this. This is one, if I had known about this, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. A couple of marriages. Years. You had a few, you, you had VD on two of your marriages, Dave. You never would have got married. Listen, I don't want to besmirch anyone's reputation, but it wasn't me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Do horrible. you think there is a state so out there? I'm so glad that I know that neither one of my ex-wives will ever listen to this podcast. Well, that's good. Anyway, go ahead. All right, can I get to the Can I get to the question, yeah, Dave? Get to the question. Right. Dave, the question. is there a state in the continental yes. USA yes. that if you get VD, can't get married? Yes, I'll tell you why. Why? Because there's no way you would be asking me this question that's this bizarro if there wasn't actually a law in the books somewhere that says- Yeah, the, the fellows out in Nebraska- Corn huskers out there. Really? You're in Nebraska. That's protection. You take a blood test. You got the clap. They care about those those huskers. Yeah, corn huskers, right? Corn huskers. What yeah. do you think about that, Nathan? You've had your share of VD. What do you think? I don't know. I think uh, if one person has crabs and another person has crabs and they want to get married, I don't see the issue. That seems very safe. Keep it all in the family. There you go. It sounds good. Well, of course, if we're talking about crabs, we're talking about something that can be taken care of with a simple bath, bath. but a more serious type of venereal disease. Gonorrhea, Dave. Syphilis. Again. Chlamydia. Again. Chlamydia. Again. But yeah, if you've got AIDS, if you've got whatever, whatever, whatever. What about monkeypox? What about a couple of guys want to get married if they got monkeypox? If they let them get married, Dave? I would let them. I would I keep say, it in the family, right, I brother? Say this, however you want to, however you want to live your life, you can live your life. But I don't think it's a bad idea for both parties to see one another's medical records before they get married. I, I think, don't that's think that's not a bad, bad idea. I mean, maybe if they, if they, yes. if I had known that my wife's family's medical history, they're all like autistic. And yeah, there's a little Down syndrome in there. Yeah, never would have married her because I came out with two kids who are afflicted with a lot of things. <laughs> Nathan, thoughts? Uh, Dale, you are truly one to talk, considering you were born without your frontal lobe. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so, and this is a, this is one state out of out of 50. Yeah, it's just Nebraska. I wonder why. Very progressive. I don't know, Dave. How, how Any idea how old these laws are? Did you? Come on, Dave. I know. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was sorry. in the Marine Corps. A lot of people in the Marine Corps got venereal diseases or sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah, yeah. Well, you go out in town after you, you know, get your paycheck. You're in Okinawa or the Philippines. Or you got a big wad of money in your front pocket. You have a few beers and you meet a real attractive Filipino bar girl, and you have sex with her. And she's got about thirty diseases, and you're bound to get one of them, Dave. Is that how that works? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That, it's like Russian that, roulette, playing <laughs> Russian roulette with the street whores from I the Philippines. I think I, I would think that if from what I from what I understand about those situations, I would think that it'd be Russian roulette with like five chambers full, one chamber <laughs> empty. Yeah. Hi, right, Dave. Back to you. All right. Throwing piss out of a car. What do you think about that one, Dave? Should it be legal or is it legal? I think it's only illegal if you hit the person. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm i going to say, again, I'm going to say this has got to be, um, I don't know why it would be. 
Yeah. Well, at least in Oregon, you would think that's a real redneck type. Oregon, of, yeah, Oregon, no, kind of. It's hippie. Out mountain, mountain yeah, hippies. Mountain, mountain, hippies, mountain, hippies mountain, are pissing mountain. everywhere, right? Pro, yeah, it's illegal probably, though. Oh, listen, a lot of long drives in Oregon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad it's not illegal in Massachusetts. I can tell you, during my time as a law enforcement professional. <laughs> probably pissed in a Dunkin' Donuts cup Why is 20 it? times. 20 and, times? And, and opened the door to the cruiser on the side of the road and poured Don't it out. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie. We all know you just piss your pants because you like the warmth. <laughs> <laughs> you work in a detail or something like that. Oh, I get it. You're, you you're can't out, leave. You're, yeah, you're in the you're, middle of the highway you're, or somewhere you're like that. You're a crossing guard. Uh, the end of school is approaching. They would rather have you pee into a bottle and dump it out in front of all the kids as they came out of, out from school. This reminds me of a funny story. We had a police officer working a detail from another city, Gloucester, Massachusetts. And this was a major roadway with a some landscaping in the middle of it. He was in the middle of the roadway and he was behind like a, a sign, an election sign. And he started to piss and a couple of people saw him and they called the department. And the chief went down there and told him to leave and don't ever come back in the city again. Really? Yeah. Urinating in public, police officer, Gloucester, Massachusetts cop. <laughs> That's, I mean, on the one hand, hey, when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah, but not, you know, not like two in the afternoon, Dave, like yeah. two at night, midnight, something like that, 2 a.m., you're you gotta, fine. I got yelled at by, years ago, I got yelled at by a state cop because I was um, driving home and I was, uh, I pulled into a, a Rest rest area, not a rest area with men's rooms. And I went to the end of the, the back of the berm. Those rest areas are notorious for homosexual meetups, Dave. Yeah, but it's not. You get arrested for sodomy over there, right there, Dave? It was a it was a <laughs> it was at rush hour. It was daylight. I was down in the berm. So anybody who saw me, who looked at me driving sixty five miles an hour on the highway, they would have seen a man from the waist up. So the, the, so the they trooper pulled over and yelled at you, right? Yeah he, yeah, he yelled at me. And it's like, I wasn't, you know, nobody could see anything. But yeah, you could tell a man standing there on the side of the road. Jesus, Dave. Can you be back. a little bit more discreet? Well, that's that's what I took from that. I said, I got I to gotta climb a little further into the woods. You, you want to know what they do in prison a lot? And they've done it in the cell block at, at the police department is the prisoners will piss in a cup. And then when you go down there, either to take them out, to get them fingerprinted or take them out to go to, to go to court the next morning, they'll throw piss on you. Really? It's very common, in, especially the jail setting. Why would you do that to the people who are in charge? Oh, they just, like your, I said, most your, criminals, your, most career criminals are just nasty, nasty people. What do you think about that, Nathan? You're a prison guard and Hector from the Crips gang out of Boston drops a whole cup of piss on you. How would you handle that, Nathan? Yummy, more please. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's gross. <laughs> that's gross. Any, uh, let's move on. To the next All right, let's one. move on. These are a lot easier now. So these are laws that are more specific just to Massachusetts. All right, Nathan, you're in the hospital. Yeah. You get hit by a car. Yeah. You're on death's door. Uh-huh. And the last thing you want is a beer. Mm-hmm. Can you have it? Wait, wait, the last thing you want or the only thing you oh, want? Oh, the only thing you want is a beer. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Is, is it legal for me to ha- have beer? In the hospital. In the hospital? Well, first off, I wouldn't be asking for beer. I'd just ask my nurse to open up a bottle of uh, rubbing alcohol. They <laughs> send me to the moon, baby. <laughs> that's, well, that's, let me answer that's, that that's for you, very, Nathan. Very Unfortunately, specific, very specific last request, Nathan. <laughs> Unfortunately, your last request, a nice Budweiser, you can't have it. At least in Massachusetts, it's illegal to have alcohol in a hospital. Now, we've all heard the stories of the Boston Bruins and other professional sports scenes where somebody's in the hospital and they bring them, they quote unquote, smuggle in beer, but they're also the Bruins. Back then, I think I think these were stories from the big bad Bruin days, the late 60s, early 70s. Some guys in the hospital, they just bring up a rack of beer. Is this something dealt with? Only by whatever nurse is in the hospital. Yeah, I think it's more. It would be more specific to who was in charge of, of that part of the hospital. What nurse knows about it? What doctor knows about Pri- it? I can private, tell you. Private room versus private room. Yep. I got a call very close to the end of my career. There was a lady, elderly lady, in her eighties, dying in the hospital. Her son, thankfully, ex marine. He showed up and he had a beer. For himself and a beer for his mother. They used to drink together. Although she was dying and she was still there, but she wasn't leaving the hospital. Yeah. So she could drink. So we popped a beer 
put a straw in it, held it to his mother's mouth. She sipped it. She said, had a couple of sips. He was drinking his beer. The nurse came in, ordered him out. There was an argument. Three or four security officers showed up. Three or four other nurses showed up. They wanted them arrested. I showed up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he had a Marine, he had a short sleeve shirt on. It was the middle of summer. He had a Marine Corps tattoo. Oh, I knew it. I knew and it. I walked in there and yeah. I said, What's up, brother? And I saw his tattoo. I go, You're in the Marine Corps? He goes, Yep, you know, 1970, Vietnam, whatever. I, All right, brother. Hey, this is the deal, man. They, they want you to not give your mother any more beer. Is, is she done drinking? He goes, Yep, she's all done. I go, are you done drinking? Yep, I'm all done. All right, brother, you're good. And they, they wanted them to leave, but I said, come on, she's dying. She's in hospice. Yeah. So he was cool. Everything was fine. But it, w- it was a tough situation because I, I could hear the tension as I was walking down the hall. They were kind of egging this guy on to see, to see if he would assault them so the security could hop on him and arrest him. Really? Yeah. You thought they were? I knew they were. I could tell just by the way they were acting. Were you walking faster or slower when you? I had a good little walk going because I, you know, had a good little walk. I wasn't running, Dave. All right. You want to know why? Because sometimes those hospital people deserve to be assaulted (laughs) because they antagonize the wrong people. So that was one time in my career that I went to the hospital for that type of issue. Okay. And we dealt with it. And, and like it, I said, it, again, everything it was fine. It, uh, it's, it's good that everybody was done and you were able to restore order. Yeah, take care of my marine friends. Something. You know something? Hopefully you would do that for anybody I in probably that situation. Would, Dave. All right, Nathan. Yeah. You meet a nice old lady, about 85. Uh huh. And you're going to have sex with her. Of course. And she has false teeth. Okay. Does she have to take them out before you guys have sex? I hope she takes them out. Let's, yeah. let's make this more realistic. Gummy Wonderland. <laughs> let's, let's make this a little more realistic. Nathan, mm-hmm. you don't have as good a, a, a week selling drugs as you usually have. Yeah. So you don't have a ton of money. So you uh-huh. drive down to downtown Lynn mm-hmm. to pick up a girl. Yeah. And she's maybe, I don't know, she's maybe 32. She looks about 85. Yeah. And she takes out her false teeth before uh-huh. she starts. Yeah. All right. Okay. Is that a good thing? That's a great thing. That's still a great thing? It's an amazing feeling. Well, she, <laughs> at least she's, she's abiding by the law, Dave, because in some states in this country, you have to take your false teeth out before you can have self, sex, brother. I know. I don't know what that's for. Are you going to choke on them? What's gonna, I don't know what's going to happen, Which Dave. Which state? Oh, this is in Massachusetts. Not in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Like New York, New Jersey, a few places in between new york new jersey yeah i think they have a lot of prostitutes per capita there so i guess i don't want the prostitute choking on her own teeth oh is that why possibly okay so you do it for your own protection i would think so dave so i really don't understand this whole sex thing anyway but that's yeah, what they tell me i've heard that <laughs> your, your wife was telling me that <laughs> all right and this next one is this is uh, this is right up your alley this dave. is criminal this, this is, is never going to happen to you so what don't even worry about it with these legislators a woman may not be on top during sexual intercourse i mean that's ridiculous yeah how many years it am is. I going to get if she is not only on top, but she is currently sodomizing me? <laughs> with, with and she a, forgot to take her yeah, uh, the teeth out. <laughs> oh, she, she she put in her new dentures, which are all made with shark teeth. You, in, <laughs> in, in, in a Muslim country, you could be getting, you can be hung, hung at noon. Yeah. Yeah. Muslim countries are bad Absolutely. News. In Saudi That's fine, Arabia. Because I like to be choked for the finish. <laughs> I can't believe that. A woman can't be on top. No, I don't know what to tell you, Dave. You, you're really not going to have to worry about it, Dave, because you, you got to get a woman in bed first, Dave, to even yeah, figure but, out if she's going to be on top anyway. It eliminates- Very remote. It eliminates half of the sexual positions. <laughs> What's the next one? All right, Dave. We got about five minutes left, all right? We're going to kind of go from laws around the world. Yes. Nathan. Mm-hmm. If you were in Saudi Arabia on a trip yeah. and you were looking to buy a Playboy magazine, do mm-hmm. you think you could find one over there? I'm guessing the answer is no, I won't be able to find one there. No, you, you wouldn't be able to. And if you did find one and you were walking down the street with it and you got caught, mm-hmm. you'd be subject to potentially, in that type of a country, Muslim law. Mm-hmm. It'd kill you, okay. hang you, oh, that's execute hot. you Ooh, for something like fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. No, if they if they've got a public hanging, then they're gonna need to delegate delegate some space for the splash zone. <laughs> when I fucking finish after that tight rope around my Adam's apple. Fuck. Okay. All right. So you know, I'm gonna give a quick little story. At the embassy in Egypt, we had pornography, we had Playboy's penthouse. Yeah. For the amusement of the Marines. Yeah. 
and we'd get rid of them. For the articles. <laughs> we'd get rid of them. We would give it to a lot of the Egyptian security forces. Because you were a goodwill ambassador. Yeah, and they were they get all nervous and they don't tell anyone. And there was like four or five or six of them that we would specifically give them to. Yeah. And they got, like I said, they were very happy to have them, but they were strictly illegal in that country. And they were very concerned that anyone would ever find out. That's... So 30 years later, I'm letting the Egyptian government know that they had three or four security forces <laughs> for the president, Hosni Mubarak, has pornography, probably dated oh 1985 in their house. Uh, yeah, and imagine how, if you're looking at images from Playboy and you're from Egypt, you're looking at like the forbidden fruit of forbidden fruit. Oh, absolutely. Because the women are so much different. Yeah. They'll, they'll, like I said, they'll kill you. They will kill you dead over there. What about adultery? Dave, you're married, but you come out of a comedy show in the Middle East and, and some fine looking Middle Eastern girl wants to have sex with you. What are you going to do? I think to myself, she's probably a spy trying to get top information from me because she's a really bad intelligence. Yeah, because she thinks I know in that something. country too. Adultery in the Middle East, uh -oh. especially hardcore Middle Eastern uh -oh. countries, death is the penalty. Firing squad, hanging, whatever else they do over there. Have the uh -oh. ISIS execution to chop your head off at noon in the public square. And again, I'm thinking, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that this is the kind of law that applies more to some people than others. Now, adultery is still in some parts of the U.S. It's still illegal. Boo! <laughs> I hate my wife. <laughs> Fucking let me fuck someone else that isn't my wife. She sucks. She's the worst. <laughs> now, if wow. that's the case, a lot of people in law enforcement should be locked up. Yeah. Yeah, adultery. Just runs rampant in the law enforcement profession. Cops, the courts, probation, everything. And you know We're who all else? having sex with each other. You know married, why? not married. You know why? Because the, the uniforms. Oh, they attract each other. Oh, oh I, they just, attract each I other. just love a nice female cop in uniform. There you go. <laughs> That's a good point. And this is why UPS drivers do so well, because women love the uniform. This is, cra this is a crazy law. Oh, absolutely. Thankfully, most of these laws are in the Middle East, and if you don't go to the Middle East, you're fine. Thankfully, in the U.S., some of these laws I just spoke of, obviously the pornography and yeah. adultery, they're not, they're not enforced. They're only enforced if, especially pornography, if you're under age 18 or something like right. that. So that little sodomy thing, sodomy thing we talked about early on, as long as your doors are locked, Dave, and no one knows about it, you're fine, brother. Car doors? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, let's end on a good note here. We're going to give right. some information on where you should not go if you, wanna, if you don't want to be, at least at the very worst, hung or shot in a firing squad. And these are the 10 countries that they have the strictest laws. China, not going there not too su often. Not surprised. Cuba, Saudi surprised. Arabia, Equatorial Guinea. Where is that, Nathan? Do you know? It's, uh, it's not here. All right. I know that. <laughs> I didn't know where it was either, but I looked it up. It's in Africa. Near the equator. Yeah, Equatorial Guinea. <laughs> Hottest place on the earth. Eritrea is also in Africa. Yeah, they, they, I've never heard of it myself, but I looked up some of the girls from Eritrea. And mm -hmm. you know our vice president, Kamala Harris? Yep. She looks just like a lot of those girls. Really? She, I bet you she's from that country, not Canada. She just doesn't you want think to say she's it. from that country? She looks like she is. Look up, the, look up the girls of Eritrea, and you're going to look at them, and the features that she has is the features the that they have. The girls of Eritrea? Yeah. What, what magazine is reading these All things? All right, so Syria. Don't find yourself in Syria. No. Iran. That's, that's yeah. Singapore. And I didn't know this because I, I spent a year in Japan. Yeah, I'm surprised Singapore. In Japan. Well, oh, Singapore. Is, they'll, they'll, what's that? When they whip you, they cane. Yeah. Caning. They'll cane you in the square if you get caught stealing. They'll like whip you with, it, with a, a wooden stick, a real skinny stick about 100 times. How did it feel? It wasn't me, but I was in Japan, and I used to break the laws on a religious ba you know, on, on a weekly basis in Japan. On a religious basis? On a religious, on a weekly I, basis, I, too. I, it's <laughs> against my religion not to steal, proprietor. And, and this and last Singapore. one, and this yep. last one, and this is, uh, goes out to Brittany Griner. Hey, Brittany, Russia isn't even in the top 20 as worst, so she doesn't really have it that bad over there. 10 years ain't that bad for her. Poor kid. Poor, poor woman. Well, if she's listening in her cell... She could be in um, Iran right now. They'd be they'd be killing her. All right. Anyway. All right, Dave. So that, was, that wasn't bad. That wasn't so, bad. So we're lucky to live where we live. Yeah, absolutely. We're lucky we're, to live in the good old USA. And am I correct to say, so here in Massachusetts, where we are, sodomy is okay. 
Lemonade stands run Lemonade run stands are rampant. running rampant. You can piss in a cup, toss it out the window if you want. You can't go too slowly. Can't go too slow. And you all and the you, porn you want. Yep. If you find yourself a nice elderly street prostitute, if you want her, take her gums out, take her gums or take her dentures out. If you want to keep the dentures in, keep them in. And if Nathan wants to marry somebody, even though he's got many, many sexually transmitted diseases, as long as they don't hold the ceremony in Nebraska, he's okay. Nathan's fine. All right, so that's been it. That's our version of Laws of the World. We're happy to help with everybody's education on that. See you guys next week.